If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Welcome to Common Ground. I'm your host, Scott Knudsen. In this episode, we listen as local leaders speak of the significance of the 2015 Bemidji Gamad powwow held at Bemidji's Sanford Center. I'm Maggie Montgomery, and I'm General Manager of Northern Community Radio, which includes KAXE in Grand Rapids and KBXE in Bemidji. And I was involved in the powwow by applying for a grant to pay for it. The powwow took quite a bit of money, and we applied for arts and cultural heritage funding to help make that powwow take place. Of course, when we started, we didn't even know we were going to do a powwow. And the Arts and Cultural Heritage Grant was set up so that a station like ours, a radio organization like ours, would work with a Native American radio station to do a project in the area. So that's when I contacted Brad Walhoff at uh, the Eagle, KOJB, in Cass Lake, and we talked about wanting to do something that would make a difference in the community with the grant money that we got. So we talked with the mayor, Rita Albright. We shot some ideas around, and it was Rita who said that the Sanford Center has always wanted to do a powwow, and that's how we settled on the powwow. My name is Rita Albright. I'm the Bemidji mayor. And this last spring, we were very excited to host a powwow at our Sanford Center here in Bemidji. It was a powwow that included three reservations in our area, Leech Lake, Red Lake and White Earth. And all those three communities came together with the Bemidji community to celebrate the culture of a powwow at the Sanford Center. When we came together as organizations, us with KOJB, the challenge wasn't working with KOJB. The challenge turned out to be that it was such a large project. We had no, uh, I, it was my first powwow. So we had no idea what we were getting into with a powwow and especially one of the size. Once we got into it, we realized we didn't have enough money, we didn't have enough food, we were expecting thousands of people and uh, those were the challenges of the powwow. Working with Brad was easy because Brad being such a big part of the Leech Lake Reservation, he had all the connections that needed to happen in order to make the powwow happen. Yeah, I'm going to give her a call and just see how she's doing on her way. So. Okay. The mayor will then go up on, on the stage up here. Okay, my name is Daryl Northbird. KOJB Radio and KBXC had asked me to be the coordinator for the Sanford Center Powell for 2015. Thanks so much, guys. That answers all my questions. Yeah, so um, as Daryl mentioned, we're coming here, and if the governor can, we'll go around in here, and Daryl Siki will stop here, and then we'll come around one more time. Is that correct? Yes. When I came on board, I told him that I would come on board, but I didn't want a Powell committee. I'd be the beginning and end of all the answers for them. So when it came to this side of the event, I took care of everything. We couldn't have done this without people like Daryl Northbird and all the people that he hired to put the event on. They just did an outstanding job. It was so comforting that once the event started, it just kind of took care of itself 
And that's because we had such good people involved in the event. Having the Sanford Center made it special for a number of reasons, with the ability to host a large audience as well as a large number of dancers. But often at powwows, dancers don't have a place to change. And so we had the locker rooms available, and that was really fun. We had the ballroom available for a feast and for vendors to be set up. And all of this could happen rain or shine. That was really special. People didn't have to worry about the weather, either too hot or too cold or too rainy or too many bugs. The Sanford Center worked with us really well. They helped come through with some of the food for the event and they cut some of their costs for us. And they saw it as a community event as well, as something they wanted to get going. And as the mayor told us, the Sanford Center had always wanted to do a powwow, so this was their opportunity too. So they went the extra mile in helping make it happen. The only thing that uh, I was fighting against was time. We weren't sure about the funding until later on. We had like maybe about two and a half months to put it all together. We had a large contingent of volunteers there that uh, all helped out with the powwow and it was fun gathering with them in advance and uh, looking out over that large space that was going to be filled with people and imagining what was going to happen. But this being my first real powwow, I had no idea what to expect. So that beginning period, I didn't know if uh, 10 people were going to come or if 4,000 people were going to come. And it was closer to the latter. Good afternoon. Good morning. I had been to powwows before, but I have to say that having that powwow in the Sanford Center was really special because it's a large venue and lots of people could be spectators and lots of dancers could be out on the floor at the same time. And it was, I, I don't want to say a neutral place, but certainly a place that both natives and non-natives felt comfortable coming to. Well, my name is George Earth Sr. and I attended the uh, Sanford Powell and I thought it was a great event. A big relationship from the reservation into Bemidji. Powell is something that we've had for centuries and it brings back the relatives and the friends, and also uh, it brings our drumming, which is very spiritual for all of us. And the dancing is also a spiritual matter, and we meet all our relatives and friends there that maybe we haven't seen for quite some time. When we first got there and started setting up, we were the first ones there as radio people. So I kept looking in the stands thinking, where are all the people? The seats are empty. Maggie, is anybody going to show up? <laughs> and uh, then as things progressed and we got closer to the grand entry, I looked around and the stands were basically full. And uh, that was a very good feeling. To me, this was an opportunity for people to come together and learn something about someone else. I think too often we're separated by our communities, by our beliefs, by our gender, by our age, and sometimes by our culture. And this was an opportunity to have uh, folks that had never been to a powwow be invited and to come and learn. I ran into people who said they had conversations with Native American people that they never would have had before. And they felt, because of some of our footwork prior to the powwow, we produced some pieces about why non-Natives don't attend powwows. And both we and KOJB ran these pieces, and it was uh, educational. So people felt like they could strike up conversations and ask questions. And I think uh, some of that groundwork that the radio stations laid helped bring people together, helped churn things up a little bit so that people talk to each other. I 
was wearing my war bonnet, which is very spiritual thing for me to, to wear. It was a gift from the Great Spirit, so that's why it's so meaningful in all the regalia that I wear is also from others that have been given to me. And that's why it's so spiritual to uh, wear those regalia. And the bells also has a meaning. The bells mean that you keep in contact with your spirit, the spirit world, which I think sometimes we we neglect to understand that. The grand entry to me was phenomenal. You basically had three native nations. You had White Earth, Red Lake, Leech Lake, all coming together. And here they come out of the tunnel and you have the uh, chair people from each reservation. You have their veterans leading with their flags. And then behind them you have the mayor of Bemidji, you have a state representative, a state senator, all coming in at the same time, and then all the color of the uh, regalia of the dancers. It was just an overwhelming event for me. Bonjour, my name is Carrie Jones. Um, the tribal chairwoman for the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe. I've been the tribal leader for the tribe for the last three years. This last spring, it was an honor to be asked to be part of the Sanford Powell. During the event there, I remember standing in the entrance there with the other tribal leaders, our honor guard, our royalty, and I remember looking into the stands and the crowds there and seeing individuals from all of our tribes, seeing non-natives coming in and being welcomed there. And to me, it felt like it was a really powerful event to have so many different individuals coming together for the good educational purposes for the Native American culture. And I guess I felt a sense of pride too, being a Native American woman standing there and to see that event happen for the first time. And a lot of people talked about it, how it made history that day. My name is Daryl G. Siki Sr., Red Lake Nation Trumpet Chairman, going on 10 months. And I was there to meet with the governor and bring up some issues that we want him to hear and participate in this power and hand over our Red Lake Nation flag to be flown at Sanford Center. I felt like we, it was a very important significance because uh, it opened a door for our Red Lake Nation people that they are being invited. The door is open for them to be involved in the community of Bemidji. My name is Irma Visner, and I'm the tribal chairwoman of the White Earth Nation of Anishinaabe. I was invited to the Sanford Powwow by the city of Bemidji and the Sanford Center, and I was thrilled to be invited. What impressed me at the Sanford Powwow were all the tribal people from three nations coming together along with the city of Bemidji, the governor of Minnesota, and our tribal leaders from the three largest tribes in the state of Minnesota. My favorite part was the grand entry. Grand entries are always goosebumps. A spirit of pride and a spirit of inclusiveness and a spirit of celebration. It's I love grand entries and particularly to be a part of one.
to me, that was the most spiritual thing is seeing all the leaders, uh, the Bemidji mayor there and all the people from all the reservations, tribal leaders participating in that powwow, dancing and singing. To have all three tribal chairs there together was really special. I know them each individually and I've visited with them each individually and I've met with them each individually as an elected official but I've never had them all together in one place and I thought that was pretty special not only for the community here in Bemidji but for all the visitors that came too. To see the tribal chairs dancing side by side was a real spectacular event. I wanted to gather these three nations. They were going to already do a flag ceremony already. That was already being done. And then Brad Waloff, uh, the KOJB manager, has said, well, why don't we bring this out into the light and bring this out into the open? And I said, that's a great idea, Brad. We will run with that. And this is how we'll do it. We will have the mayor come on in, present the gift. The gift will be blankets for them. We will do a gift exchange and the gift exchange will be the focus of it all. But after the powwow, there was kind of a buzz on social media that uh, Mayor Albright's gift of blankets was culturally inappropriate because of the historical baggage of biological warfare waged against the indigenous populations. Did either of you two see any of like the, the social media buzz on on that no but i think people people uh, maybe jump to conclusions about things like that when we we talked at great length in our planning about what to give as gifts and blankets i think are very traditional i i think i brought up the suggestion of of blankets and it wasn't because of anything that had happened in the past it was because um, Bemidji Woolen Mills is such a big part of this community and they make some uh, blankets that are just absolutely gorgeous and uh, I thought that those would be great gifts. I think people sometimes read too much into something like this. Um, I, I think it was a great gift uh, to give, um, especially since it's from someone right here in this community. The exchange is what we call a bugajige. Uh, Bugajige gay is like, you know, like a gift exchange type thing. And when you, when you do that, uh, we, we honor each other. We give each other life. That's what it does for us. And that's, that, that is an Anishinaabe thing. And so the mayor said, yes, that, that's, let's do that. Friendship for our communities and goodwill for the future. I felt that the idea for giving a blanket was a good one because I know that give, blankets are often given to honor, and that's exactly the purpose that we had with the blankets that we gave to the tribal leaders. As a person who has Ojibwe family members and has worked for an Ojibwe tribe, I understand that their customs are important and, and I appreciate them, and that's one reason I thought. The blanket gift was a, a very good, good symbol, and they were accepted in a good, good way. Jerry, I want to present with you. When we're trying to build a partnership in good faith, we usually exchange a gift of wild rice or birch bark. Or Rita Albrecht did present the tribal leaders with a Pendleton blanket. And when that is given to you, that shows a strengthening partnership there. To be able to receive that from an individual, I felt really honored by that. Because I know when I've received Pendleton blankets in the past, I always remember that event when I see that blanket of saying, well, this happened when I signed the MOU with Chippewa National Forest, I was given a blanket when I was at 
the Sanford Powell, I was presented with it, so it's always a memory. Any gift, whether it's a blanket, some food, a medallion, a, a pair of earrings, is always given from the heart and should always be received in the heart. That's our teaching. We had the tribal leaders bring their flags, which we posted in the George W. Nielsen Center. And that was very symbolic, I think. It is a good relations, a beginning of a relations, a government to government relations to understand the culture of Red Lake Nation people. I have visited the governor previously, and I have visited with the, the, the chairs of Leech Lake and Whiter before, but being together at this event was something significant for all our nation. I had the honor of standing by Governor Dayton as the grand entry came into the arena. He seemed very emotionally taken by the experience. Somebody said he didn't smile much, but honestly, I think he was filled with emotion. We talked about the young kids, we pointed out the dancers and the beautiful things going on on the floor, and he was very emotional at the time. Our uh, leaders are there, and plus the governor. That's the first time I've known that the governor attended our polls, which I thought was really neat. The Sanford Center is a beautiful facility. And what the powwow did, speaking for myself, and probably for many Native Americans, that's now we feel a part of the Sanford Center. Well, I think they have to get together and discuss these things with their feelings and what their thoughts are and, and uh, talk about those issues as a whole and, and, and understanding one another again. And respect, you know, one of the things I think has got to be respect for for whatever we're doing to heal. And we have to have the elders involved in some of that. It used to be my feelings. There was a big uh, wall. This event opened a door and to step to the city of Bemidji for our people to be all together as, a, as people. Whenever we have events in our community that bring different people of different places and different beliefs and customs together, I think what that does is create tolerance for one another and acceptance and relationship building. And, and for me, creating that tolerance is finding a space where ideas and customs that are different from your own can reside. When we want to have any kind of social change that is for the good, it is dependent upon building relationships, maintaining those relationships. Be kind to each other. There was a time when they took all of this away from us, and that was a great evil that came along and took that from us. And it's gonna take a great kindness to bring it all back. I think it was a positive for our community in more than one way. And of course, we love hosting great events like this at the Sanford Center. But with the number of people, we estimated probably 3,000 people attended 
and another almost 500 dancers, 450 dancers or so. That kind of influx of people into the community who are out and about is certainly going to be a great economic benefit for the community as well. All events at the Sanford Center drive economic development in our community and of course the powwow is just another great event and a great example of that. I'd like to see more of the nations. There's still Grand Portage, Mille Lacs, Net Lake, Shakopee. I'd like to see them all come on up here and enjoy it also. But I'd just like to see us all get together, you know. And, and we need a starting point somewhere. I hope we keep having those, uh, those gatherings along with other government, like City of Bemidji, State of Minnesota officials, and all tribal nations of, throughout Minnesota. We all get together, all the Minnesota tribes together, along with the governor, and, and each city of mayors have become involved, and we all have a good time and have a, a feast and visit. Just a thought. Thanks so much for watching. Join us again next week on Common Ground. If you have an idea for a Common Ground piece that pertains to North Central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3014. To view any episode of Common Ground online, visit us at lptv.org. episodes or segments of Common Ground, call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People, November 4th, 2008. If you enjoyed this episode of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.